This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute, and available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. How old were you when you learned about dinosaurs? Were you one of the millions of kids that got hooked on classics like Jurassic Park or The Land Before Time? These towering reptiles roamed the Earth for more than 165 million years. In comparison, humans have only been around for about 5 to 7 million years. Even if you never went through a dino phase, you have to admit, they're quite unlike anything on Earth today. For Michael Benton, studying these creatures was more than a curiosity. He's a professor of vertebrate paleontology at the University of Bristol in England and author of the book Dinosaurs, New Visions of a Lost World. His research focuses on one of the greatest prehistoric mysteries of all time, why the dinosaurs went extinct. You've likely heard the narrative of how an asteroid crashed into the Earth and wiped out the species, and you're correct. This theory has been accepted since the 1980s, but Benton got to thinking, what if there's more to the story here? Would our favorite dinosaurs, like the T-Rex and Stegosaurus, still be here if the asteroid had missed Earth? Benton transports us back to a time before humans. It seems that certain groups of dinosaurs, that in, within individual localities, they were kind of doing okay. There's nothing to worry about. If you'd gone back in a time machine, you'd have seen T-Rex chasing a triceratops and a herd of, these are the spiky horned ones with horns on their faces. The triceratops would form a ring and to defend their babies and the T-Rex would be grunting with uh, disapproval and so on. But summed up over the whole world or even over the whole of North America, it seems it was just at the beginnings of a downturn. So how did paleontologists notice this decline? They used the entire fossil record to find the rate of replacement or how quickly new dinosaur species were popping up. What they found added a whole new perspective. When we did this in 2016, a lot of people were very unhappy. No, no, this can't be right. Blah, 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 blah. You didn't think about this or that or the other thing. And so we repeated the one with a different data set, focusing in on North America, where the record is probably the best in the world for the last millions of years of the dinosaurs, and got the same result, absolutely. And the methods we use repeat the calculations billions of times. So we're using a so-called iterative method or Bayesian method where each time you run the calculation, you just twiddle a few things. Let's Maybe we're uncertain about the age of this dinosaur, or we're a little bit uncertain about where it sits in the evolutionary tree, or maybe we're not sampling in, uh, fossils in a, an even-handed way across the whole area. So you just keep tweaking, run it again, tweak, run it again. The conclusion of this exhaustive study showed that there were other forces slowly pushing dinosaurs out the door. Some paleontologists theorize that climate change was responsible. Benton explains that these creatures enjoyed the warm weather of the Mesozoic era, but as the Earth's geography changed and temperatures slowly dropped, the dinosaurs began to struggle. When I started looking at the extinction of the dinosaurs, there were two very definite viewpoints. And the traditional view, the older view, back in the 1960s and 70s, was that dinosaurs declined gradually over 40 or 50 million years. And this was maybe connected with mountain building episodes as the Earth broke up and the continents moved apart, which could have made parts of the world uninhabitable. But then the impact idea became accepted. It was first sort of rejected. People no, 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 this is far too dramatic and amazing. And no, it's ridiculous. But of course, the evidence piled up and there is no doubt. And we have the crater. The crater is in Mexico. And these two viewpoints have rarely overlapped in conversation. He says that although the global fossil record is incomplete, both extinction theories of the steady and sudden collapse of the dinosaurs can be proven true. One key piece is the North American fossil record, which has far less gaps than the other continents like Australia and Asia. Benton focused his research on these fossils and was able to paint a more accurate picture. It's based on the evidence, it's based on the data, and we had no particular 
expectation. Although I think we were clear that the asteroid did it. So there is no question the physical evidence that the asteroid hit the Earth in Mexico, the Chicxulub impact, 66 million years ago, is absolutely there. Hopefully there's no more barreling asteroids in our future. Either way, with or without the impact, scientists are now fairly certain what would have eventually happened to dinosaurs. Temperatures coming down towards the levels they're at today, in the beginnings of the Antarctic ice cap, maybe 30, 40 million years ago, I don't think dinosaurs would have survived that. So I think even if the asteroid had not hit, they would have been continuing to decline. There were little bursts of warm temperature 50 million years ago and so on. That might have helped them a bit. But it got cooler about the time of the spread of grasslands over all the continents, maybe 30, 40 million years ago. I think they would have gone out because they just couldn't have survived the cold winters. In some ways, dinosaurs are still around today. Menton points out that avian dinosaurs with bird-like features were the least affected by the asteroid's impact. The birds survived. And of course, birds are living dinosaurs. And as far as we can tell, only maybe three or four, maybe five species of birds survived through the extinction event. And I think the evidence is that they were ground dwellers. So there were things like ancestors of chickens and ducks that could sort of grub around on the ground. They were not dependent on flying and catching flying prey. But beyond that, what can we say? They survived. But it may only, you know, it's a bottleneck. They, they are very, hundreds of species of birds went extinct. And it was just three or four species maybe survived through, from which we get all the 10,000 species of modern birds. So, any guesses on what the next mass extinction event may look like? Benton says that sometimes we forget that extinction is a natural process. It makes way for new species to thrive. However, this doesn't give humans a free pass to live irresponsibly. People are cutting down those rainforests in Brazil. There goes that valley, 27 unique species of beetles. There goes another valley. Whoops, there's another 32 species of unique beetle. Who cares about beetles? Well, you know, those are species, and therefore this is adding up. And so it's almost certain that the figures are huge. And they're matching up to the levels we've had in the mass extinctions in the past, because they've, in the end, uh, typically done for maybe 50% of species. And at this rate, I guess it will carry on. Yeah, what do we do? People know what we have to do. We have to stop cutting down the rainforest in Brazil. We have to stop wearing and throwing away plastic. We have to stop drinking out of plastic bottles and throwing them in the sea. All the obvious things, it's quite easy. We know what to do. And we just need people to actually do those things. We'll never get the chance to walk alongside the beasts of our childhood dreams like in Jurassic Park. But we can help to slow the disappearance of other majestic creatures. You can learn more about Michael Benton's research in his book, Dinosaurs, New Visions of a Lost World. You can also find archives of past shows and guests at viewpointsradio.org. A variation of this story originally aired in August 2021. Our writers this week are Scarlett O'Hara and Amira Zaveri. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Gary Price. Coming up on Viewpoints. When I look at intelligent systems on machines, the consciousness is already kind of there. Are artificial intelligence systems already conscious? Experts can't seem to agree. Then... I've done a painting of Bin Laden when he was captured and killed, and that was a big cover. Speaking with the man behind some of the most prominent illustrations of our time, I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows and find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Every day, we rise challenging ourselves to work for what we believe in. At U.S. Border Patrol, protecting our borders is more than a job. It's a calling. Agents answer the call, 
working together to keep our country and communities safe. If you are ready for a new mission, join U.S. Border Patrol and go beyond. Learn more at cbp.gov careers.